God will finish what he started in us. Yeah. And that's what we stand upon. I can come before him with my weaknesses and with the things I struggle with, and I can acknowledge them before him and say, this is who I am, Jesus. This is, this is, what I, this is how I feel about this. And it's good to do that. It's good to let your ears hear that confession coming out of your mouth rather than holding it in and wrestling with it and allowing the adversary to use it to uh, steal your joy or, or, or steal your confidence in who you are in Christ what you are in Christ. Uh, if we were perfect, we wouldn't need Jesus. That's right. Hello. That's true. And, and when I think of, of growing up in, in the faith, when I came to the faith in the early 80s, it, it was like, man, you, you were basically told you have to walk perfect and, and, and you got to do this and you, and you got to do that. And, and it, it was all Bible and it, it, it was important that that transformation process continue to go on. But oh, more often than not, when you failed, friend, you failed, and it, it wreaked, wreaked havoc with your mind, and and uh, and shame was uh, uh, prevalent inside of your your thinking, and and sometimes people looked at you as a failure, and you accepted that you you were a failure. And there's some people that if they're if they're just if they're just process driven, process to be uh, complete or or whole or perfect, you, you're you've got a real long struggle to, uh, to, to make it to the finish line. On the flip side of, of that, people use as, as an excuse. Well, I'm human. God knows my heart. God knows what I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with. So it, it's finding that balance, and that balance can only be found in the Word. And if I understand that, my flesh will always see, see resistance as an obstacle or a hindrance or, or, or a problem. I, I can't focus on that. If I'm focusing on that, then I'm focusing on, on my flesh because the Bible also says that my flesh is my carnal way of thinking is at odds with God. It's at enmity with God. Right. So it, it's, it's changing this thinking to allow the Spirit of God to be strengthened inside of me so that I can view things as, okay, God knew this was in me. God knows this is how I see this, how I feel about this how I am in this, and therefore he will use this as a launch pad to bring me to a place of transformation because he declares that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Man may look at us as failures, and man may look at us as insignificant, but he looks at us as a, as a treasure, as a, the sheep of his pasture. He looks at us as... as he knows we're an earthen vessel, and he opted to put his spirit in this earthen vessel for the sole purpose of us realizing that <laughs> this isn't me, this is him. My strength comes from him, my power comes from him, my development is through him. And therefore, I can yield to the transforming things he allows in my life. Does it feel good? No. Is it painful? Yes. Uh, he never tells us when it's going to end. And so we, sometimes we, 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 like Paul said, I, I've got to forget what's behind me and I've got to press against that resistance. I've got to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. Amen. And the determining factor of whether you're victorious or whether you fail is if you're looking at it through the eyes of your flesh or through the eyes of your spirit. Mm. And I'm here to tell you there's some things you just need to take them off. Let them go. You might not have the answer. You might not even have the solution. You might not even understand it from a word perspective. But if you're willing to take them off and let God be God, then you will have victory. And that's where we find ourselves in 1 Samuel 17, starting at verse 32. I mean, Israel, was, they were, their knees were knocking. They were shaking in their boots. Because they were looking at Goliath through the eyes of their flesh. They were looking at Goliath as an obstacle. In verse 32, after, you know, David comes and he, he, he checks out what's going on. And he, and he you know, of course, he, he says, well, what are you people doing? Why are you, why are you allowing this uncircumcised Philistine to, to, to uh, strike this fear inside you and allow, allow this giant to come against you? Uh, in, in, and, uh, and defy the armies of, of the living God. 
he was looking at it, number one, through the eyes of the Spirit, but number two, Brother Charles, he was looking at it through his own experiences. Can That's you right. say amen? That's amen. right. That's right. Amen. And so he, he, he was, his brother, you know, looked at him as, as nasty and, and basically chewed him out. Uh, but I pick it up in verse 32 where the word gets back to Saul that Saul had made a proclamation. Whoever defeats this giant, I'm going to give him my daughter in marriage and everything. And, and David's asking questions about this. So David says to Saul in verse 32, let no man's heart fail because of him. Notice what he says. He doesn't say this guy's nine feet or whatever tall. He doesn't say his shield is huge and he has a, a, a spear, the, the beam is the, oh man, this guy is a warrior. He doesn't even, he doesn't That's even right. acknowledge That's Goliath right. uh -huh. in the picture. He makes the statement to the people of God. Yeah. Don't let your heart fail you in this. Don't, yeah. let, don't be taken aback by this yeah. image that is before you. Your servant will go and fight. Of course, everybody probably said, who's this guy I think he is? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when you're full of faith, the people around you get intimidated by that. Yeah. Yep. That's so true. easy for you to say. That's true. I guess no problem. I guess you don't have any problems. People that live and walk in the hallelujah side, people around on, them that are struggling, on, oh, preacher. man, they look at you like you're from another planet yeah, or something. Yeah, that's true. No, I don't have a Superman suit on. I don't have a big S on my chest. I've got issues just like you. Yeah. I just refuse yeah. to allow them to That's defeat right. me. That's right. Amen. I refuse to allow them Amen. to, to Amen. take Amen. away my faith in what That's he's right. able That's or right. capable That's of right. doing. That's it. Amen. I do my best to let my faith exceed what these eyes yes. see and what, what these ears yes. hear. Amen. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's yeah. not. Amen. So yeah. Saul says to David in verse 33, he says, you're, you're not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Notice where Saul's eyes are. Mm -hmm. his Saul, Saul's eyes, the anointed king's yep. eyes, yep. Were, were of flesh. Yep. Not of spirit. Not of the history of God. Not of what he saw God do. Not of his own history of how God delivered Israel from, from Egyptian bondage. And all the stories that were handed down from generation to generation to generation. It's easy for you and I to forget where we've come from. It's easy for you and I to focus on the past. It's all... That's how it used to be. And, oh, that's, that's this and that's that. And it's so easy to focus on the noise that's taking place in this hour and all the crazy things being said and say, oh, yeah. what do we have to, what, how's this election going to turn yeah. out? And well, what, what's going to happen? And my job stinks. And, and then people around me, oh, and just focus on the flesh. And Saul, instead of saying, bless God, my son, uh, if God be for you, who can be against you? And so David says to Saul in verse 34, he, let me tell you a story. Let, let me tell you what this God is capable of doing. And every single one of us that is sitting in this house today has a story to tell, a testimony to tell. The very fact that you're in here is a testimony to the power of God in your life. The very fact that nobody forced you to be here is a, a testimony of how faithful God is and how He hasn't given up on you. He hasn't given up on me and He keeps on being God. You can fall in the middle of the day and He'll pick you up. You can stumble in the middle of the night or however that songs go. He keeps on being God. Don't focus with eyes of flesh, focus with eyes of spirit. Let the spirit of God let you see they that before you are more than they that be against you. Do you feel the angels when you're at home? Do you feel the angels that encamp about you when you're driving in your car or walking down the street? Did he not say he'd give his angels charge over you? Yes, your job might be miserable. Your conditions might be miserable. But it doesn't take away that he's still God. And his angels are watching over you. And his hand will protect you. Let him take you into that secret place. Let him, let him take you under the covering of his wing. Abide under his shadow. It might be just a shadow. But his shadow is eternal. It's not affected by this temporal life. Amen. Amen. Oh, David stands up proud and he says, Your servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion and a bear and took the lamb out of, out of the flock. 
Do you realize a 2,000 pound animal grabs this sheep and David goes after it? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a real lion? Have you ever been in the presence of a real lion? And this dude goes after the sheep that he did. I mean, you talk about a boldness. But he wasn't born with that boldness. That's right. His experiences That's right. of trusting yep. God gave yep. him what he had. That's right. oh, yeah. He sang on the hillside playing his songs to the Lord. When you're in his presence more than anything else, there's a, there's a transference yes. Yes. of his power, right. of his love, of his confidence oh, in so his true. presence yes. and fullness of joy. So I can be in the worst conditions in the world and still have joy because I've been in his presence. I say that to him all the time. Praise God. The more time you spend with him, the more infusion and transference of his power, of his grace, of his life Hallelujah. comes inside of us. Hallelujah. So when you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, you don't fear evil because you know he's with you. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good preaching. Amen. I went out after him, he says, and I smote him and delivered it out of his Amen. mouth. And, and when he rose up against me, I caught him by the beard and I smote him and then I killed him. People that were here listening to that, their eyes are probably like silver dollars. Mm. Really? Really? And then he rubs it in. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. But he doesn't stop there. You see, God gives you experiences so you can look back after those experiences and you say, you know what? Mm -hmm. That you can come to say, trust me, what you're going through right now, if you will let God finish what he's doing, trust me, you will run into somebody and you will be able to use this very thing that you're facing to be able to encourage them and say, this is where I was, but this is where God's brought me from. Oh, Amen. Amen. Praise God. David said, moreover, in verse 37, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. He hadn't even gone to fight yet. He didn't even walk down into that valley and stand in the shadow of that giant. He hadn't even done it. Mm -hmm. But his mind was made up. You know what? That's right. Just as God did, did for That's me right. back there, That's right. he's going to do for me yes. here. Yes. And yes. when you accept what God has you through, yes. when you accept where God has taken you, right when you Come accept on. what the, the road, the journey, yes, you may have taken a, a right turn when he wanted you to take a left, and right. yes, you were might have been the one that you, you're reaping what you've sown. Who knows? But when you accept that God's hand yes. is upon you yes. and he's the one that's, that's guiding right. you that's and, right. and leading you, you, you'll be able yes. to look at future obstacles and say, yes. God yes. kept me back there. God Amen. kept me through this. God kept Amen. me through that. Amen. God's Amen. able to Amen. keep me through this and yes. beyond. Yes. Praise yes. God. I believe it with everything in me. If I don't believe it, then he's a liar. And if he doesn't fulfill it, then he's not God. Some things you just need to change. Maybe you need to change some spiritual clothes here today. I don't know. But God wants us to have our vision by, by spirit, not by flesh. Yes, right. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good preacher. Come on. Good preaching. Amen. Right, man. Amen. So, Saul, who is... Seeing things through eyes of flesh. That's good. That's good. <coughs> arms David with his armor. Uh -huh. Amen. It's so easy to reach for something you can chew on. Something you can feel. Something you can taste. Something that, you know, your credit card or, or, or whatever. It's always easy mm. to reach for something that you, you can touch and feel with flesh. Hear with flesh. And Saul, all he had was man-made armament. Amen. He had disobeyed God. He, had, he had, never, had never trusted God. When God told him what to do and how to do it, he refused. Mm -hmm. And then he justified his actions in that refusal. And so the scripture says that Saul arms David with his armor and he, he put on a helmet of brass and upon his head and he also he armed him with a coat of mail. You, you can only imagine those chains that, that, you know what the coat of mail is, it's so heavy. Oh, wow, man, wow. 
You know, so the scripture says that he arms him with this stuff. And David girds his sword upon his armor and he assayed him to go. He, he convinced him. He's trying to convince him. You, you need to just go out there. Here's, here's what you're going to use and you're going to do this. When you look at things through, through the eyes of flesh, flesh will always give you an alternative. Always, always, always. Our minds are capable of coming up with an alternative answer to yes. what God is doing, yep. especially when yep. we don't understand yep. what God is doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we try to figure it out. Well, maybe if I do this. Well, maybe if I feel this way. Well, maybe if I try yeah, this. That's right. Always, when you're looking yes. at life through the yes. eyes of your flesh, you will always come up with an alternative that is opposite of God. Amen. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word, because you can't see the Word. But the Word can impart into you and I the things that we need to discard yes. and the things that we yes. need to keep. And when you make your decisions based on the Word of God, there are no excuses. Uh -huh, you man. can't say it doesn't work. It might not be working for you because you don't have the faith, but it works for Him. Yes. And it'll always work for Him. Amen. Thank you. So Amen. David girds up his sword upon his armor and he tries to convince himself, well, okay. All right, I'm going to fight. The sword was probably bigger than he was. Uh -huh. That coat of mail probably was a ton. Felt like it. So here he goes. He's, he's trying to. Okay, I'm going. Huh? When all of a sudden it kicks in, and and and, 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 and yes. the Bible says, yes. "For he had not yes. proved it." Uh huh. That's right. Yep. Before you can have faith to believe God, you've got to prove Him. You've got to prove some things. Mm. It might be just to convince your mind and your flesh. When Jesus tells the story about the widow woman that came before that judge, he asked the question, will this kind of faith be on the earth when I return? Mm -hmm. You've, you've got you've to have a tenacity in you to make up your mind that I am not going to be defeated again. I'm not going to let this stop me. I'm not going to let this hinder me. I may not be who I can be right now, but I am going to get up I'm going to forget those things which are behind. I'm going to press towards the mark for the prize. I'm going to be faithful to God. And I'm going to, I'm going to be faithful to Him in areas that I feel I can. And I'm going to pursue Him in areas that I feel I cannot. And David hadn't tried out Saul's armor. He didn't want to fight this battle through, the, through eyes of flesh. So David says to Saul, forget it. I cannot go with these for I have not proved them. And David put them off. The Amplified Translation, verse 39 says, David girded his sword over his armor. Then he tried to go but could not for he was not used to it. And if you think that you're going to get victory following things that your intellect is telling you or what people are telling you or what, uh, what organizations, I mean, so we come up with all these hooplas that that they want us to jump through hoops and, and do this and accomplish this. And if you try this, you'll be successful. And if you try that, you'll be successful. And everybody's getting rah, 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 rah. Yeah, we can do this because it's not ordained of God. Specifically, you haven't even acknowledged God in, in this situation. Mm -hmm. And so God said, you, you, he'll bring you to that place where he'll empty you out of yourself. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And I'm glad he does that. You'll try something and it doesn't work. You'll try another thing and it doesn't work. You'll go to do this and you'll fall flat on your face and, and you'll get up and you'll get so tired of scraping your knees and failing and he brings you to that place where you say, all right, all right, I surrender, Jesus. I'll do it your way. David girded his sword over his armor and he tried to go, but he could not for he was not used to it. And David says to Saul, I cannot go with these for I am not used to them. Mm -hmm. And David took them off. I do challenge you, saint of God, what is God telling you to take off today? The psalmist in Psalms 44 verses 5 through 8, listen to what it says. I'll read it in the New King James translation. Through you, we will push down our enemies. Through your name, we will trample those who rise up against us. Mm -hmm. For I will not trust in my bow. Listen. 
I mean, there were professionals. They were they were masters at yes. archery. Yes. They were masters at throwing their spears. On, they were masters swordsmen. It's but they came to the place where they said, you know what? Amen. Yes, this stuff might help me in the Come natural. On, yes, this stuff might make oh, me feel Lord. strong in the natural. That's good, but preaching. when it comes to the spiritual, these are I can't That's do good, anything preaching. with them. Amen. Amen. I cannot fight spiritual Amen. warfare Amen. with fleshly inclinations or fle yes. fleshly yes. armament. Yes. My eyes are going to deceive me. Oh, My heart is deceitful yes. and wicked. Amen. Who can know it? Amen. I've got to approach this from a spiritual Amen. perspective Amen. because it's not Amen. by might and it's not by power. Oh, it is by His Spirit yes. and His Spirit yes. alone. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. God! Praise yes. God. Yes. 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 Good For I will not trust in my bow, nor shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our enemies and have put to shame those who hated us. Oh in God we boast all day long yes. Yes. and That's praise right. your name come forever. On, come on. Salah. That's good, preacher. Amen. Oh, yeah. You know what That's Salah good, means? Man. Salah means think about this. Yeah. Don't just read it as words and keep on going. Think about what he just said. Yes. Think about God's victory That's promises. Think of, of, about God's forever settled word. Think about God's Amen. promises to you individually and to us collectively. Hallelujah. He hasn't brought us this far to lead, leave us, let us fall Hallelujah. and let us fall aside or go astray. Yes. He'll keep you. He'll finish what he started Hallelujah. with you. Thank if you, you want to go there, he'll take you there. If you want to be his, Amen. no man will pluck you out of his hand. Amen. But faith has to come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. And when yes. he tells you it's time to change, Hallelujah. you need to change. Hallelujah. You need to take it all. You need to quit thinking the way you're thinking, acting the way you're acting. And be strong in the Lord and in the power of his life. And praise God. Praise God. Jesus' name. Hosea. Man, I would not want to be the prophet Hosea. Can you imagine God coming to you and telling you to marry a prostitute because God wants to echo judgment upon his people? They were, they were prostitutes. They were harlots in the eyes of God because they forsook him and they were connected to the gods of their area and the gods of the people around them. So he tells the prophet, I want you to marry a prostitute. And as you read through Hosea, the first chapter, you see that his life and the problems in his life and the situations and relationships with his life affected everything. And, and God used that to prove to Israel, this is what you've done to me. Mm. Yeah. But in Isaiah 1 and 7, the Bible says, Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. Mm. By now, Israel is broken up into two camps. And he was going to prove to Israel, you have failed me. You have done this. You have done that. Mm. You, have, you have been yeah. a prostitute. But to Judah, he says, Yet I will have mercy on the house of Judah. I will save them. Notice, I will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, mm -hmm. or battle. I injected nor, but it says by horses or horsemen. God is saying to them, you need to stop living and walking and seeing things through the eyes of flesh and start seeing things through the eyes of my spirit. It's not going to be your weaponry. It's not going to be by bow. It's not going to be by the sword. I'm not even going to send you in a, in a physical battle. It's not going to be by horses and horsemen. He identifies those things that we put such confidence in. Well, bless God, if I do this, and if I'm accepted, and if I pay my tithes, and if I'm faithful to the house of God in attendance, and I, and, and I do all the do's and I don't do the don'ts, then bless God, he's going to bless me. We find ourselves walking through that valley of the shadow of death, and it throws us off. What am I doing wrong? And the devil comes up. Oh, you failed. You're, you're miserable. You did this and you did that. And God doesn't love you. And God's not going to give you another chance. And on and on he goes. But there's something in the Holy Ghost today that says if you will change your thinking, mm -hmm. God will give you victory. Thank you, Jesus. A familiar portion of Scripture out of Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. So 
he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, could, could we just let that sink in a minute? Would you say that with me? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's not by my Jesus. It's not by my power. It's not by my intellect. It's not by my abilities. It's not by how much money I have or don't have. Or <clears throat> It's not on my possessions. It's not on physical strength or, or bodily weakness. It's, it's not. It has nothing to do with it. It's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You're going to get to heaven. I'm going to get to heaven by his spirit. Yes, and if you want to keep comparing your life through eyes of flesh, you'll continually walk in a lower state than what he wants you to, to walk on. You'll continue to see him as weak. You'll continue to see him. He said, well, I don't feel that way. Pastor, God is good. God is strong. But your mind, your mind is seeing things through flesh, not through things of spirit. He looks at you and calls you a mighty man or woman of valor. But you don't see yourself as a mighty woman or man of valor. Because you're looking at it through the eyes of flesh and weakness. Not through the eyes of spirit and strength and victory. And what he can do. The sufficiency of his grace. The non-answer that he doesn't tell you. Because he doesn't want you to interfere with the process. We accept the process. We accept the potter's wheel. We accept the valley of the shadow of death. We, we accept the dry spells. We, we accept the wilderness experiences. Because we know that he knows there's something in us that, will, that won't get us to heaven. If we pray him to take these pressures off of us. And pray him to take these temptations off of this. The only way David could go and face Goliath was because of the lion and the bear. The past experience that God showed that's himself right. strong yeah. on his behalf. There's things happening to you right now that's going to prepare you to what you're going to face tomorrow. Yes. You want to pray that yes. off of you on. so when you hit tomorrow Come you'll on. be too weak to survive? Come on, preacher. Come right. on, amen. No, no, a thousand amen. times. Amen, amen, that's good. Romans 13, 12 in the Amplified Translation. The writer says, the night is far gone and the day is almost here. Let us then drop. Let us then drop. Let us then fling away the works and deeds of darkness and put on the full armor of light. See, nobody goes to battle piecemeal. You have to have the full armor of God on. Your feet have to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You can't go into battle without peace. That's why the devil in this world works overtime to steal your peace. Have you focus on the things that don't give you peace. And, and, and just wrap your mind up in, 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 in uh, what's the word I want to use? In confusion, distractions, through people, through situations. But if you have peace, those Roman soldiers had to have the right kind of shoes on That's right. because they didn't know if they were going to be fighting in That's a sandy right. soil yeah. or a yeah. rocky soil. Yeah. Some of their shoes had the spikes that would give them the That's stability right. that they exactly. need, needed to yeah. stand. Yeah. They needed to be on footing yeah. so when they were at war in hand-to-hand -hand combat with their enemy, right. the lack of having good foot support yes. wouldn't cause them to fall right. and be done in. They had to have their loins girt about with truth. And that was just a girl that picked up their, their skirts and tucked it in so that they'd have the freedom to be able to move without tripping on their dress, tripping on the gown, whatever that it was that they wore. So truth is what girds us up. And the girds, this is where your muscles are. This is where your strength. That's why they say when you lift, you lift with your knees bent. Lift with your, and this is what's supposed to be lifting. And his truth is what lifts us. Amen. Praise God. The breastplate of righteousness protected their heart and their organs, their stomach, the, the liver and everything. So it had to be on and the sword was able to, 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 to cling off of it if, if, if the adversary did get a, get a shot to, to try to take you out. The helmet of saved thinking. 
Oh, protect your mind more than ever before, That's saint right, of God. Man. Protect your mind. Recognize yes, the yes, fiery yes, darts yes, that come yes, your man. way. Recognize the thoughts. Learn how to cast down those imaginations and yes. everything that That's exalts right. itself That's against right. the knowledge That's of God. Right. Let your eyes be viewed through the spiritual process. That no weapon formed against thank me will Lord, prosper. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The shield of faith always quenched the fiery mm -hmm. dart. And the sword of the spirit, which was the rhema word of God, is what always gave them victory. Amen. Sometimes you just need to give up. Not give up in your relationship with him. Give up trusting in yourself. Give up trusting in your own thoughts. Give up trusting in man. Give, it, give up trusting in opinions. Everybody's got a, a, an opinion. Trust me. That's how I heard one man said, everybody's opinions are like armpits. Everybody's got one and they stink. <laughs> I don't care about people's opinion. That's right. Amen. Amen, preacher. Amen. Hello. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The devil uses opinion as a weapon of confusion. If the opinion cannot be substantiated out of the mouth of two or three witnesses of God's word, then all it is is an opinion. If somebody comes to you and says, well, I think this. <laughs> Show me in the word of God. Stand with me today. Amen. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you just lift your hands towards heaven for a moment right now? I want you to say to him, Father, I, I receive your word today. I receive your word, Jesus. My thoughts haven't been in the right place. So I strip off these hindrances. I strip off these obstacles. I strip off the thought process that I've been using. And I put on the armor of light today. I put on the mind of Christ today. To see you as you really are, Jesus. To hear your words of truth and your words of confidence, Father. That you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. That though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I do not have to fear evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You'll prepare me a table in the presence of my enemies. My cup will run over in Jesus' name, Father. Tell us what to strip off. Tell us what, what, what we need to change, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Distractions. It's not going to be blatant sin. It's not going to be blatant disobedience to God. What's going to hinder you the most and me the most is distractions. Distractions in our mind distractions in life and we've got to learn how to focus on the things that he wants us to focus on and we need to learn how to release the things he tells us to release in jesus name in jesus name i loose the spirit of the holy ghost in this house today and if you'll receive the word of god by faith god will take you through what you're going through and beyond in Jesus name and you if you feel well I'm at a pretty good place right now then hold on because you will be entering he'll make sure you enter those places where you will be challenged because the Bible says he will move us from faith to faith I might look through a glass darkly today but tomorrow he'll give me light to see my way even in the darkness he is light because there's no darkness in him if you haven't been praying, if you don't have a close relationship and walk with God, he'll see to it that you start having some challenges and, and temptations and testing in life to make sure you get back to that place where you once was. Oh, he's going to finish what he started with you. Until you tell him, God, let me go. I don't want anything to do with you. He'll never go. He'll never give up. He'll always work things out together for good. He'll always want to do things exceeding abundantly above all that you could ask or think. In Jesus' name, Father, today. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. I'm going to read it to you in the Passion Translation. The Bible says in King James, talks about casting down imaginations. That imaginations is our human thinking, our human way of reasoning. Paul says, cast 
down the, that way of thinking. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. How do I do that? You know the Word of God. You spend time at His feet. You acknowledge Him in all your ways. You, you stay with Him until He tells you to leave. You don't have a, a prayer time. You have a prayer life. You walk through the day talking with Him. You, you lay down at night, you're talking to Him. The, whatever you're shopping, talking to Him. You're, whatever it is that you're doing, there's a, a relationship, connection with Him. You don't allow anything to disconnect you from the Holy Ghost. Always having eyes of the Spirit to see events, to see how things change, to see what He's doing. In Jesus' name, 2 Corinthians 10.5, the Passion Translation says this. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture like prisoners of war every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. It, when we really consider it, this whole thing is so much deeper than just coming to church. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I come to church with expectation every time. Thank you, Jesus. I come to church, Sister Pat, needing something from God, mm -hmm. desiring to drink at His fountain, yes. desiring to eat the bread of life. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we submit ourselves to you today, Jesus. We're so thankful. If you feel led to pray for somebody, why don't you go over and pray for them right now, in Jesus' name. Father, we believe it today. We are standing on your word. We are standing on your truth. We are standing on your promises, Jesus. We submit ourselves to you, our minds, our hearts, our thoughts, our lives, our bodies. We submit it to you, Father. We commit it to you in Jesus' name. I release control of everything that concerns me. I release the control of my worries, the control of my anxieties. I release it to you, Jesus. I become whole in you, and I receive your peace, and I receive your promise. Tell me, Father. Lead me. Guide us, Father. In Jesus' name. Jesus, yes, Lord, show yourself strong on our behalf, Father. Confirm your word this day in people's lives. Confirm your word, Father, as we go forth from this house in the name of Jesus. Quicken this word to our understanding, Lord, to your kingdom, your glory, your power, Jesus. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Isn't he good? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lord, richly bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And uh, we'll see you on Thursday night. In Jesus' name.